Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. It is finally time to start working on my next big project. If you have been following this channel, you know that I like to build large RC airplanes. And for quite some time now, I have been thinking of what to build next. The last model I've built was a Douglas DC-3. The airplane turned out looking great, however it wasn't very easy to fly. So for my next build, I decided to make a DHC-2 Beaver. The Beaver is a small Canadian bush plane that is often operated in remote areas. Thanks to its large wing area, it has a really low landing speed, and with floats or large tires, it can truly land anywhere. So, I believe it will be perfect for a remote control model. As you can see, I have now prepared some of the parts for constructing the fuselage. The material I'm using is a 5mm insulation board. It is quite strong, yet extremely light. It also has this plastic film, which can be easily removed if not desired. However, it is often useful as it greatly increases the tensile strength of the material and prevents the sheet from breaking if you want to bend it inwards. I have now created this chamfer by laminating several layers of the foam together using hot glue. This chamfer will connect the ceiling and the floor to the sides of the fuselage. It will make it possible to round the edges with a nice big radius. And here it is the framework of the front part of the fuselage. After releasing my DC3 build videos, a lot of you have been asking me to share the plans I have been using. So I think I will set up a Google Drive where I will upload all the resources that I've created myself and provide links to other stuff that I found online. I would also like to really thank for all the positive feedback I have received, it really keeps me motivated to make better airplanes. I haven't uploaded for a while now, because I have been really busy, but the positive comments have still been flowing in, so really, thanks a lot guys! The framework of the fuselage is done, and I now want to turn my attention to making the wings. I always like to make the wings of my airplanes detachable, so that the models can be easily transported. For this, I will use these two aluminium pipes that snugly slide into each other. The ribs of the wing near the root will be made out of wood. It will be their job to transfer the loads between the aluminium pipes and the rest of the wing. I have drilled the holes for the pipes, however I also needed to make these rectangular holes for these servo connectors. And unfortunately for me, there was no better way than to slowly chip at it with my razor. Once this was done, it was time for me to assemble the skeleton of the center section of the wing the small part that will sit above the fuselage. I have connected all the wooden parts using wood glue. And the metal tube was then secured using hot glue. I have pre-folded the foam that will form the skin and attached the skeleton to it. And now it was time to start working on the actual wings themselves. These beams will be the main structural elements, in wing terminology they are called the spars. They were carefully positioned to exactly align with the aluminium pipes. This joint is critical for the whole wing, I therefore used a lot of hot glue to make sure it's not going anywhere. The pipes were also purposefully angled downwards to give the wing some dihedral. This part here will be a small spar at the trailing edge of the wing, which will cap off the wing box just before the flaps start. A similar piece was also attached to the outer wing, which will connect to the aileron.
In case you're wondering, I'm making the second wing at the same time in order to make the differences between them as small as possible. The outer wing ribs are made out of foam. I have carefully traced them, separated them and attached them to the wing. Now, I have created these small prisms, which will fill the insides of the flaps and the ailerons. I decided to do a bit of experimenting and attach the prisms using wood glue. Soon, the flap will be separated from the wing and its leading edge will be carved into a round shape. When dry, wood glue is easier to cut than hot glue, so in theory it should make the carving process easier. Now it is time to install the servos that will control the flaps and the ailerons. However, I need to reverse one of the servos that will control the flaps. If you never did this, here's a really quick guide. You simply have to unsolder the two wires connected to the motor and switch them around. Then, there are three wires connected to the potentiometer. From these, switch the two outer ones. It's that easy. Now you can put the servo back together. And here we have it, two servos that move in the opposite directions. Now I have made the openings for the four servos and attached them using small bits of foam. This is the only orientation in which the servo will fit inside the wing. I have also taken care of the cable interface at the root of the wing. And after checking that the connectors still connect, I have secured them with plenty of hot glue. Now I had to take care of the trailing edge. I have used my usual trick of placing the material at the edge of the table so that I can accurately cut at an angle. Now the wing is finally prepared to be closed. I started off by pre-bending the skin. As you can see, I will have to apply glue to a very large area at once. This is always a challenge because the glue cools down fast. So this time around, I decided to do it in two steps. I started off by attaching the skin to the front part of the wing. Then, I have removed the excess foam and created a little edge to which I can attach the aft part. And now, the rest of the skin was easily glued into place without me having to stress out about the glue drying too fast. Once the wing was closed, it was time for me to separate the ailerons and the flaps from the rest of the wing. After that, I have trimmed the trailing edge to give it its proper shape, as well as some extra foam near the root of the wing. I was pretty happy with how the wing was coming along. And now I went on to design the flap hinges. Each hinge would be made out of three plates that I have cut out of wood by hand. And a small piece of steel wire will be used to hold them together. These wooden plates will be used to anchor the hinges to the wing. I have first hot glued the plates to the wing and then super glued the hinges to the plates. I also decided to rethink the connection of the servo to the flap. By routing it through the inside of the wing, it will have a greater moment arm on the hinge and will also look a lot cleaner. Now I have detached the flap and started carving it into its proper shape. After giving it a good sanding, I have covered the entire surface with this white filler material. After that, I have sanded it once more and attached these balsa wood end caps to either end of the flap.
Now, I have started working on the ailerons, which have a much simpler geometry and will be attached using these simple hinges, which I have salvaged from an old airplane. I have sanded their surface so that I can attach them to wood using super glue. And finally, using these wooden pieces, I created a small arm to which the servo can attach. Ladies and gentlemen, we made some good progress on the DHC2 Beaver in today's video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode in which we will continue. Meanwhile, you can check out this playlist right here, which I'm pretty sure you will enjoy if you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your own projects.